What's up everybody, it's a sunny day. We're out on the lawn and gonna be doing some hard work today. Today is going to be filling in some spots, doing a little leveling. This is not a 100% top dressing video, so if that's what you're looking for, you're gonna to wanna to jump on. This is gonna be filling some spots, picking the right medium based on a few factors, which we're gonna get into, showing how many different ways there are to actually get a good mix down onto the ground and what's going to be best to encourage the turf to grow back up through it. Now, before we jump into the video, you can see there's some spots here that even have a little bit of sand in it behind me. This is all vole damage. I'm gonna show you what that looks like under the sand right now, and then we're gonna start getting to work. So let's go ahead and roll that intro. What's up, everybody? All right, everybody, check this out. So this was all just vole damage. They kind of came through and, and worked their way under the snow this past winter to find some food. And, um, you know, they chewed, chewed the grass down to get some food. Good for them. They made it through the winter. Congratulations. I took a little bit of just extra, like, uh, leveling sand that I had from when I put my shed in last year and just sort of filled these spots. Now, if you go back to the worm video, you can see where I was digging around in this area and showing how the grass was already starting to poke back through under the protective layer that I gave it, which was little bits of pieces of grass uh, that I kind of raked up when I had mowed. And it formed an insulating layer and the turf underneath it started to repair because you know we've got bluegrass here, rhizomes. I don't use pre-emergent. This is gonna pop up. That's really the benefit. If you just take a look over here, you can see all of this grass is already growing back in starting to fill in, just using with whatever rain and snow and that, that kind of stuff. Plus, I've already put some humic down, I've already put some aerate down, I've already put some 1801 down. But we've got growth coming through this entire area and it'll be filled in in no time. Now, this spot is going to be just a little bit low, so it is going to get filled out. And let's take a look at how we're going to calculate the materials and really get a good grasp of exactly what I'm talking about here when I say what I'm going to be leveling out. Okay, so if you look straight up behind me here, it's going to be hard to... Hey, bud. Yeah. Uh-huh. Don't bite me. Oh, shit. Stop it. Get out of here. Ah! Go, cat, go kill something. Okay, so if you look behind me, there's a little bit of a valley, a little dip here, and it's a little bit of like a frost heave area. So I've got this slope that comes down off the hill and a lot of this was done for the drainage of the property when I put this uh, level in was to allow everything to sort of flow off the north side of the house so it all kind of tracks that direction. Well, this particular area, it worked really well, but then there was a little bit of a, just a lowering in the lawn. And so we're gonna do a couple of things. This really doesn't do much as far as the overall look or the aesthetics of the lawn the way it is right now. Uh, the only time I really feel it is when I'm running the real mower over the top of it. It kind of is a little bit wavy and forms an uneven cut. Now, if I let the grass grow up a little taller, you probably wouldn't even notice it through that zone. And it's really not that big of a deal. This is just something that we can do to, you know, up the aesthetics. So let's move on to the first step, showing the level line. Okay, so these are just basically level marking stakes. You know, good when you're building patios and things like that to get a good line level on. So I'm actually gonna use these, but I'm not gonna use a string, which I could, but a kind of it's a pain in the butt. I'm gonna shortcut that here for a second. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stake over here on a high point and over here on the other side on a high point. Just set those down in this little small area, run a line across it so you can see what we're looking at because I don't think the camera quite gives it good enough dimension. So for this exercise, I'm just gonna use a bungee cord. Dab the one side right around there, get a hook on it, bring it right around, and you guys can see 
the level from one side to the other pretty simply. This is what I want to get filled in right here. So this is my about one inch area. It's not a whole lot. It's just kind of a little bit of a low spot, but it causes this little ridge and there's a dip and it's consistent from right back here down going towards the swing set. There's just this sort of low spot. So we only have about two and a half feet wide. It's not very much. Two and a half feet wide by an inch deep. And we can do some really simple math on how much material we're actually gonna need. So we're gonna pull a calculator out and do that real quick. Okay, so this is a simple online calculator from KLS Supplies. They're pretty easy to find. It's not really that big of a deal to get one. So you can get on and kind of figure out exactly how much of any material, what medium you want to do based on how deep you want to go and how big the square footage is. So like I said, I've got maybe a two and a half foot wide area and it's only right around 15 feet. Okay, so if I go ahead and punch this in, we're going to get a pretty good idea of, of materials here. So we've got 15 uh, times a width of two and a half, 2.5, and it's only looking like it's going to be about one inch deep. Okay done 0.12 cubic yards of material that is not very much this is a pretty low amount so we're gonna have to do a combination so let's go ahead and talk about materials that I'm going to use to get this exactly how I want it and the steps to make it recover the absolute fastest so firstly I'm gonna be using a combination today I will be using sand I will be using uh, a composted steer manure plus sort of composting material and I'm actually going to be using some peat moss as well. So I'm sort of building my own custom blend which I'll mix out there on the lawn and then drag around and put it in the holes as I see fit. Now there's a reason that I'm doing it this particular way. I want to create some space. I'm going to be covering up the grass blades and they need to be able to come up and, and form gr new growth all along the top of this. So there's a couple of areas that are a little lower than I would like that I don't want to completely fill in in one sitting. I want this to sort of come up and then I'll do it again and we'll just sort of move down the line until it's the level that I'd like it. So I'm choosing to go this way for a couple of different reasons. There's pluses and minuses to every single thing that you do here and there's an argument to both sides no matter what. If you are primarily clay, a lot of time it is great to go ahead and throw some sand in there and start mixing your mediums a little bit to build some extra drainage. It does work. Uh, it's not going to completely re-aggregate soil and I think that um, just for the sake of argument here, we could do a little bit of math. We typically do measurements on topsoil or on soil in general on ground. You have about 2 million pounds of soil per acre. So we can break that all down and start getting into some pretty tight math. But roughly on 100 square feet, I think you have around 45,000 pounds. For, no, that's 1,000 square feet, 4,500 pounds, about 4,500 pounds of material in a hundred square feet. It's kind of a lot. Um, and putting, uh, you know, 80 pounds of sand on that is not going to make a huge difference to re-aggregating your soil. So it throws out a lot of those, ah, you're gonna change your structure and this and that. No, it's just sort of a mild, very basic elemental change. A couple of things that I would say are this, when you are choosing your medium, you always run the risk of uh, foreign material being part of it. Now, not necessarily with sand, I mean, there could be things in there, you know, this is gonna get mixed with other stuff, but with topsoil, you do run the risk of a foreign material with weed seeds and grass seeds and things like that. Even with like the steer manure and compost, there's the potential for seed and weed um, material to make it in. There's a number of ways to address that. Uh, one thing that a, a lot of people do, and I think it's a pretty, a pretty safe uh, way to go about things when you're doing this, is to use something like Tenacity or Mesotrione. Uh, which is something we actually sell as well. I mean, we got the, the big jugs here, so this is something that can be around. Uh, we, we get, you know, we sell at Greene County, and actually Yard Mastery is selling these as well. So you can, you can always do that if that's something that you're into. That way, you're not going to stunt any growth underneath. You're not putting down any sort of pre-emergent to what could slow down any of the grass growth coming back through the top uh, or the spread of your turf uh, as it's going along. So, so there's that. Otherwise, you just sort of have to treat it as it comes up and, and that's just that. I don't really feel like I'm going to run a huge risk here. I'm going to do something to the turf and to this material once it's all laid out to help encourage that grass to come in really quickly. So I think we could talk about that for a second. 
So before I get into the hard work of all this and start spreading things around, this, this is what I actually am going to do prior to spreading anything out. Now, I'm gonna grab my little uh, Great States mower and I'm gonna come in here and mow this down just so the grass is standing up and it's, it's ready to be covered up because I'm gonna be covering all of this grass right here, all this turf. So that I want short, I wanna be ready to push. Then I'm actually going to treat it. I'm gonna run a spray treatment right over the top of it to give it a little extra food down underneath, give it a little kick once I cover it up. Then after it's covered up, I'm gonna come over the top again and I'm gonna spray the whole top for a little extra encouragement so that that's actually seeping down through this sandy peat uh, and uh, kind of manure combo that I'm putting out. So this whole area is going to get sprayed, spread, sprayed and that's how that's gonna run. Oh, but the cut too. So, I think it's time to just get to work. Yep, no way around it. Freaking love yard work. Okay, so now we've got this sweet chocolate and vanilla salt and pepper mix back here. I'm gonna go ahead, get out the rake, start smoothing this in, and then we'll go kind of do a little level check, but I should be able to just cruise right across this. Okay, so I'm gonna swing this camera around. I'm gonna show you what I just did. I'm gonna tell you there's a couple more things that I'm gonna do, and then this is done and super freaking easy. So, um, through raking this with my topsoil rake, it was pretty easy to start to get the chunks sort of swept out, which is really what a topsoil rake is good for. So I'm actually gonna be able to pull all that stuff to the side, and then I'll just scoop it off, throw it up here in the back, and I'll have a pretty smooth surface. But let me just show you what we're dealing with now. Here's our line, right? That thing is looking very nice right across there. So here you can tell where the low spots are because where the grass is already poking through, right? You've got, let's look right there, how about there? The grass is already poking through on the high spots. It's covered in the low, poking through on the high. So we've got a nice coverage going right down through this middle line where I really wanted to get it taken care of because that's gonna help keep my cornhole pitches nice. So I'm going to go ahead and just do one final smear through this thing and then I'm going to come through here and just I think I'm just going to go ahead and roast the whole lawn with humic. Just nail it real quick and uh, that way it all just gets a nice consistency but that's going to help get everything moving. All right, y'all, that's the end of the work. There's only a couple more things to do. 
for those of you who know what that's about. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, like, subscribe, comment. Let me hear from you. Criticism, interest, questions, what do you guys have? We're done with this project for the day. I'm gonna go play with my kids. See you guys real soon.